Got another past exam question for the NMR topic. So this is number 22 in the playlist. I hope you find the video helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you subscribe and let me know what you think and maybe suggest uh, different topics for future videos. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So part A, explain the use of two deuterated compounds in NMR spectroscopy. So D2O is used to identify OH and NH protons and CdCl3 is used as a solvent. So moving on to the main part of the question where we've got to come up with a structure for I that's consistent with all the evidence. So you can see the first thing I've done is process this elemental analysis by mass. So that's just an empirical formula calculation. So you put the percentage over the uh, relative atomic mass, that gets you the moles. Divide by the smallest gets you the ratio. So that means the empirical formula is C6H9NO2, which has an MR of 127. And then we compare that with the MR of the molecule, and that's presented as the molecular ion peak at M over Z127. That is the MR. You can see they're the same, so we're not multiplying this out. The molecular formula is also C6H9NO2. So moving on to the infrared spectrum now, you notice I've drawn this pink line down here. So remember, we don't consider anything at a lower wave number than 1500 centimetres to the minus one. It's the fingerprint region. It's too complex. So we just focus on this side of the 1500. And we've essentially got two key absorptions here. We've got this one and this one. So you might have thought that might be key, but it's not because these are just CHs. So we'll put that on, but we don't get any marks for identifying CHs because every organic molecule has them. So looking at the data sheet, this one here is a C double bond O. So we'll just annotate the spectrum. And this one here is a C triple bond O. In. So we can say with confidence I is a nitrile now because it's got this absorption here, the C triple bond N absorption. The C double bond O could be part of a, a few functional groups, could be an ester, could be a ketone. So we'd better just leave that, that alone for now. So moving on to the proton NMR spectrum, that's obviously where the bulk of the marks are. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know I just take each signal at a time and I go through the same sort of process and build up a picture of the compound. So we'll start with this signal here. So we've got a quartet, so we should always give the proper name for the signal. So we've got a quartet at roughly 4.2 ppm. So what does a quartet mean? It means there's an adjacent CH3 group to the protons causing the signal. The area of two tells us that there's two protons causing the signal, so it's a CH2 group, and the shift is H to C to single bond O. So what I'm going to do now is just draw up that little part of the um, compound. So that's what we've got in the structure, just from that um, peak there. So it's these protons here that have caused that signal. So there's two of them, H to C, the single bond O environment, and they're adjacent to the CH3 group. So the signal I'm going to look at next is the one that's due to these three protons here. So obviously there's three protons, so therefore it's going to have an area of three. Well, we've got two signals with an area of three. They're adjacent to two, so these are going to appear, or this is going to appear as a triplet. So it's this one here that's responsible for these protons here. So there's that written up there. So the next signal I'm going to look at is this one here. So I'll just talk through the analysis of this one. So we've got a quartet at delta 2.9 ppm. That means there's an adjacent CH3. The area of one means that it's a CH causing the signal. Now, we've potentially got two options in terms of environment from the shift value. So the data sheet says it could be H to C to C double bond O, or it could be H to C to N. Now, we have got a nitrogen in our molecule, but we've established it's a nitrile, so it can't be this, because that's not a nitrile group. I'll just draw that little bit up now. 
So that's what that's going to look like. So remember, that's this that's causing the signal. There's one of them from the area, H to C to C double bond O, but it's adjacent to three, you see a three group, so we see a quartet. Now if we just rewind to the previous part of the structure that these two signals um, told us about, we established a carbon singly bonded to an oxygen, so I'm now thinking that this is going to be an ester group. So I'll just leave that there and we'll move on to this final signal now. Okay, so we've got a doublet at delta 1.6 ppm. That means there's an adjacent CH. The area of 3 means it's a CH3 causing the signal and the shift value is H to C to R. So the reason I've left this structure on the screen is because we're now dealing with these three protons here. So three protons in an H to C to R environment adjacent to a single proton, so that's why we see this doublet. So there's those two parts joined together now, and you can see we've got that ester group that we kind of had a hunch it was um, a little while ago. So you can see there's a gap here, so that must be where the nitrile group goes. And that is a feasible structure for this compound. Now there are lots of other possible answers. It would take ages to go through all the possible ones, but that's the structure I would go for.